opinions expressed on WRNG are not necessarily those of Ring Radio Management or our advertisers. WRNG, 680, Peter Beter, and that is his real name, uh, uh, is a man who was general counsel for the Import-Export Bank for a good while. Uh, one of the things I will ask him, because several people have asked me, is what is his doctorate in? He's not a medical doctor. He is a Ph.D. He's been a member of the District of Columbia Bar since 1951. From that date to 1961, he was uh, in the general practice of law in Washington. And during that time, from 1958 to 1961, he was general counsel for the American Gold Association. In 1961, Senator Kennedy, or President Kennedy, rather, through the efforts of the late Governor George Docking and Charles Merriweather of Alabama, appointed him as counsel in the General Counsel's Office of the Export-Import Bank of the United States, where he remained as such until 1967, when he resigned to run for the governorship in his home state of West Virginia. Having lost such a bid, he accepted an invitation to do business in the Republic of Zaire, which was formerly the Belgian Congo, you recall, where he had uh, been involved uh, primarily since 1968. And uh, such a business in the development of mineral and industrial fields has brought him uh, in contact with knowledgeable leaders in and out of the government here and abroad. He's a member of the Bankers Club of America, the Judicature Society, the Royal Commonwealth Society in London, is listed in the current editions of Who's Who in the East, USA, the Blue Book in London, the 2000 Men of Achievement in London, is the author of a book entitled The Conspiracy Against the Dollar. The Spirit of the New Imperialism is the subtitle, which is published by George Brazelier, Inc. in New York. Currently, he is uh, engaged in financial consulting and uh, appears on radio and television talk shows and at seminars throughout the United States and, uh, and in several other countries. So, we're going to pause for just a moment, and then we will be joined by Dr. Peter Beter. Our guest on the hotline from Washington, D.C., Dr. Peter Beter. Good morning to you, sir. We're on the air. Hello, Harry, from Washington, D.C. No, I'm not from Washington, D.C. Now, I've got enough things going against me without that, but you are. I know what you mean. How you doing? Fine, Harry. How are you? Well, I want to tell you, you uh, really did uh, upset a few people. Uh, uh, frankly, I've had uh, probably... 30 different people who've asked me if you're really crazy because of what you said about uh, the Patty Hearst that we saw tried uh, not being the real Patty Hearst and that the real Patty Hearst is uh, is dead. Can you give us a little bit more information on that? Well, as I told you last time, Harry, uh, my sources are impeccable. Uh, number one, uh, the real Patty Hearst is dead on file. She does not exist. And you've got to remember that uh, my sources have come from the intelligence community. This is a very, very complex uh, situation. I have kept quiet about this, uh, simply because my FBI people, who have been giving me information for the past year, have been in touch with this girl, which is allegedly to be Patty Hearst, and some of the private lives and things that have been going on concerning this girl. And I have expressed my concern... Uh, over the uh, health and uh, uh, the well-being of this girl. I predicted, uh, not predicted, but I revealed some time ago that they would uh, use unusual techniques to find this girl guilty, as they did uh, Sarah Jane Moore, who was programmed uh, to uh, kill President uh, Ford. Uh, we are going down into something very uh, significantly uh, down the road of what we call uh, brainwashing, uh, programming, uh, uh, things of this nature that the American public uh, do not quite understand. It's done by what we call in the community, uh, the intelligence community, as a very old system. Once they have you in a hospital, you are absolutely gone. They can do anything they want uh, to you to program you to be some other person. And in the Patty Hearst case, I'm permitted to tell you this, this uh, morning uh, that the, uh, during that one year uh, so-called absence of Patty Hearst, which did not come out in the trial, uh, will be this void will be filled in due course. But at the present time, I want to tell you that the whole thing was uh, Patty, the real Patty Hearst uh, 
died on file at the end of February, shortly after her abduction. And uh, the reason for this being, the whole thing, of course, was to get control of the huge multi-billion dollar uh, Hearst Foundation, uh, which the people who used the SLA, which was a CIA concoction on behalf, on behalf of certain people, in order to get control of the Patty Hearst, rather a Hearst Corporation. And this was done, uh, this was uh, successful uh, three, uh, four months ago, and shortly thereafter the whole uh, Hearst Corporation, uh, by way of its foundation, went union. So it's a very, very complicated thing. Uh, I fear for this girl's life. The family is going... You, you mean you fear for the girl who was tried, who is not Pat, who you say is not Patty Hearst? Yes, I do fear for her life, and uh, it's a very complicated uh, situation, Harry. I wish I could go into it fully. It's enough for an entire book. It is being written about uh, by someone who has all the facts. I don't want to scoop him, except to say that the real Patty Hearst does not exist. Uh, she is dead on file. Now, you've said dead on file several times. What do you mean by on file? I'm saying that the real Patty Hearst does not exist. I'm giving you this. Yeah, yeah but what do you mean by the two words on file? Let me give you an example. Okay. Uh, there are now uh, uh, over 500 uh, ex-CIA, uh, ex-FBI agents and officers who are now walking the streets, which we consider who we consider to be in deep freeze. By that I mean uh, many of them do not know their real identities. Uh, they are, for all intents and purposes, dead on file. Uh, they have no Social Security number. They have no uh, ties with their original families. Uh, they have different names. Uh, they have been programmed to do per uh, certain performances in the intelligence community. Uh, they have done these and they have not been deprogrammed. So therefore, there are many of these people who are now walking the streets, uh, cut off from their families without any means of support uh, by the intelligence communities, and I happen to represent certain of these people, and also some of the people who are inside the intelligence communities, and they think this is one of the most dastardly things ever happened to people uh, who were patriotic in the first instance and who served our country in the intelligence community. So what I'm saying today is that Patty Hayes is not only dead on file, but this girl does not is not Patty Hurst. All right, well now, some time ago when you were with us, you said that Patty Hurst had been drowned. And That's right. Now, so are, you're saying... Now, let, let me get this clear. Are you saying that the body of Patty Hearst is dead or that yeah. the... Okay. The real Patty Hearst is dead. She okay. fought. She put up a tremendous fight uh, after she was abducted. And uh, they uh, took her in a bathtub, three men, and drowned her and then later burned the body. Now, this person today is not the real Patty Hearst. That's this woman now, whoever she is, as a matter of fact, I tried uh, through contacts to warn uh, certain people that this is the biggest charade ever put on. And if anything happens to this girl, you will know that what I'm telling you this morning is the absolute truth. Time for us to check traffic, and then we'll be back with more conversation with Dr. Peter Bader on WRNG Ring Radio. Peter Bader, our guest, Dr. Peter Bader from Washington, D.C., Dr. Peter, uh, we've just got a minute before we go to sports and then, then, then news, so after that we'll take calls and I'll shut up, and, and I know you'll be your usual brief self. But uh, uh, one question I did want to clear up, several people have asked me, what kind of doctor is Dr. Peter Beter? I'm a doctor of jurisprudence. I also have a Master of Laws in International Law, and I was counsel to the Export-Import Bank of uh, Washington in the United States. Uh, where President Kennedy appointed me, and I've practiced law since 1951 in Washington, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I gave most of the et cetera uh, before I called you this morning, so people would be familiar with your background. Is, are there any, we just got 30 seconds, but any recent developments in the uh, question of whether there's any gold left at Fort Knox? Uh, no, the uh, government hasn't uh, moved uh, to disprove my charges that the gold has gone to Fort Knox. Okay. We'll be back with Dr. Peter Beer uh, right after the 
sports and then the news from CBS. And uh, we'll take your calls. If you're on the line, sit tight, and we'll take them right after the CBS News. If you're not, join us at 261-9764. I'm Harry Davey. Your dial set at 680 on Ring Radio. WRNG Ring Radio in North Atlanta. I'm Harry Davey, and our guest on the hotline from Washington, D.C. is Dr. Peter Beter. And I'm going to shut up and take your calls, and in order to let as many people as possible talk with Dr. Beter, and we almost always have two or 3,000 more calls blocked than we can handle, I'm going to ask your cooperation in two things. When I connect you with Dr. Beter, you'll hear a tone go off in your ear. Start talking. Please spare us the how are you today and Dr. Beter are you there can you hear me he'll hear you you please go ahead and ask your question or make your comment I'll ask you to please confine yourself to no more than two questions and preferably ask them and then let me go ahead and terminate the, the telephone connection and you'll have 10 seconds to get back to your radio and turn the volume up and Dr. Beter can go ahead and answer the questions and I think we can move a lot quicker that way and it'll be a lot more enjoyable listening so those statements having been made. Let's begin. You're on Ring Radio with Dr. Peter Beter. Go ahead. Dr. Peter, last week I heard you and you was commenting on some of the finances of the politicians and particularly Jimmy Carter, I ministered in, as to where he got his start in his financing. Would you comment on that, please? Thanks, sir. Uh, Jimmy Carter uh, is a strange phenomenon, you know, and uh, a strange phenomenon is this uh, phrase, uh, I'm informed uh, from very reliable sources that Jimmy Carter's uh, whole program uh, was orchestrated by the Rockefellers, uh, who've always been behind the scenes on the, on the major uh, politicians of this country. And uh, so, so far, they've used Jimmy Carter in order to get rid of uh, George Wallace, uh, just as George Wallace was used in 1972 to get rid of the other front runners. Uh, Jimmy Carter, in the end, will be double-crossed by the Rockefellers, uh, and he will be thrown up on a trash heap, and uh, there will be another Democratic vice president under Hubert Humphrey. Dr. Beta, you mentioned last week that Carter was used as Wallace had been used. Question. When you say used, do you necessarily imply that the person knows he is being used in both those instances? Uh, for instance? No, uh, they, uh, they don't know. Uh, Jimmy Carter uh, does not know. He's been given certain promises. Uh, he's been given a uh, tremendous build-up on the national media, which, are, which is controlled uh, by the Rockefellers on the past media. Uh, but uh, this is the usual way of doing things. Uh, they're going to have to uh, uh, get rid of uh, Jimmy Carter one way or another after his job has been accomplished because uh, Hubert Humphrey will get the nomination. Uh, this deal has been in the works for quite some time. Uh, a great sum of money and control of an oil company has been uh, uh, forthcoming to Hubert Humphrey. His uh, uh, tax case here in Washington uh, has been uh, uh, slapped with a presidential seal. Uh, this tax uh, case uh, involves millions of dollars. And for this quid pro quo, uh, Humphrey will throw the election uh, to Nelson Rockefeller if there is an election and uh, the whole thing is uh, controlled and uh, uh, programmed uh, in uh, New York City by the Rockefellers and the American people uh, again is being taken for a ride uh, this is just a circus as I said Carter will be at the present time he will be dumped just like George Wallace was used Okay, Dr. Peter, i got to interrupt you here. We'll be right back. The time is 9.10 on WRNG. Dr. Peter Beter, our guest. You're on Ring Radio with Dr. Peter Beter. Speak up, please. Go ahead. Yes, Dr. Beter, referring to Patty Hearst, you said they wanted control of the Hearst fortune or whatever. Who are they? Uh, they are the Rockefeller brothers. They now control the uh, Hearst Foundation uh, in New York City. And as I said, as soon as they got it three months ago, one week later, uh, the whole uh, enterprise went union. And the reason it uh, went union is because they can make sure 
that they will have complete control because they do control uh, George Meany, the head of the FLCIO. Thank you. You're on WRNG with Dr. Peter Peter. Go ahead, please. Yes, Dr. Peter, I'd like to ask about, are you familiar with the airline crash in Chicago that killed Mrs. Howard Hunt? I read a lot about it, and I think uh, uh, the boys in uh, Chicago have a great deal of information on that subject. Skolnick. Yes, Sherman Skolnick, I believe it was. He's done a wonderful job in that investigation. Just by coincidence, uh, Sherman Skolnick, let me look here in the book, is going to be my guest at... uh, 8.30 8.30 next Tuesday morning, sir, so we can take uh, that up directly with him. Thank you. Yes, sir. He's doing a fine job, eh? Yeah, there was a good article back, I forget how long ago, by, I think it was Alan Stang in American Opinion on this thing, and we've interviewed Skolnick several times here. Uh, he's, of course, he's the one that sent Otto Kerner to the can, too. Yeah. Uh, by the way, for your listeners, uh, uh, there is uh, someone brought up the issue of the uh, Fort Knox Gold, Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a full article in the uh, current issue, April issue of Playgirl, on the uh, theft of the uh, 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 gold reserves at Fort Knox. You're on Ring Radio with Dr. Peter Beter. Go ahead. Yes, I'd like to know, uh, with this being a CIA conspiracy, why, have the, why has the Hearst family gone along with this other girl? Uh, that's a very, very good question. Please go ahead. Uh, the, the uh, CIA and the FBI informants who gave me the complete story uh, say that they must go along with this story. Uh, Mrs. Hurst uh, knows full well that this is not Patty Hurst, and so does the father. A uh, real reason will come out in a forthcoming book written by these ex-CIA and FBI agents. Can't you even give us a hint as to why? No, because uh, I owe it to these people not to reveal it. It's their story. They worked on it. Uh, they were in touch with this girl when she was in hiding. Uh, they know the intimate details of this programmed girl that is alleged to be Patty Hurts, and I don't want to uh, uh, go beyond uh, what I promised them. You're on Ring Radio with Dr. Peter Beter. Go ahead, please. Dr. Beter, when you first came on, you uh, placed a lot of emphasis on Patty Hurts being dead, quote, on file, and you gave us an analogy so that uh, we could understand this distinction you were making between her being dead, quote, on file, as opposed to being dead in reality. And then you followed that with the statement that Patty Hood was indeed uh, dead in fact after she was drowned in a bathtub. Yes, ma'am. And I want to understand why you placed so much emphasis in the beginning on her being dead on uh, file, girl. quote, uh, when what you really want to say is that she's dead in fact. Yes, ma'am. She is the real Patty Hood dead. This girl today... Uh, whoever she is, is dead on file. By that I mean she has lost her real identity. She is in what we call, in the intelligence community, in deep freeze. She has experienced what is called the millivolt system. Uh, This is a very simple system. Uh, It's very complex as far as the average American is concerned. But you must remember that the intelligence community is working years ahead in order to brainwash the American people. And if I broke the story, uh, no one will believe me. If the story itself is so uh, grotesque, so far out, that people would begin to impugn my integrity and my credibility. So I cannot give a complete story. I cannot hit a person over the head. Uh, I have two or three tremendous stories that I cannot even break at the present time because... The American people are not yet ready to accept what I have to reveal. So I have to do it in bits and pieces uh, because the intelligence community itself is in, a dis- is in disarray. It is still in the clutches of the Rockefellers. They've used the intelligence community for their own power and their own greed. And uh, this is a tremendous story. And someday it will break, but I don't believe Why don't the Rockefellers or some of the people who are still active uh, in utilizing the intelligence community have you uh, uh, have a heart attack or something? Well, I, you mean me? Mm-hmm. Well, I did have a heart attack. Uh, a real one or, or an induced one? No, a real heart attack last May the 9th, 1975. But the real reason they have not come after me if you will look in the April issue of Playgirl this month, you'll see what they've tried to do. But also in addition to that, on uh, June of 1974, 84 members of the Rockefeller family at Pocantico Hills voted uh, not to do anything to me. And it was, it was the 
cousins, the fourth generation that came to my rescue because they are against uh, the machinations of the four Rockefeller brothers. You mean the Rockefeller family is run as a democracy? Well, I, they did as far as I was concerned. They do uh, meet twice a year, June and in December. And uh, David Rockefeller's daughter, uh, Peggy, is the secretary. And they so recorded uh, on a June meeting of 1974 not to do anything to me for the present time. Uh, by that, I don't know what they mean when I was informed that they would not do anything at the present time to me. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Tune in tomorrow to find out if Peter Beter is still alive. <laughs> okay, we'll return to take more of your questions. If you'd like to join us, the number is 261-9764 or 261-WRNG. I'm Harry Davey. Our guest is Dr. Peter Beter by long distance from Washington, D.C. Join us on Ring Radio. You're on WRNG Ring Radio with Dr. Peter Bader. Go ahead, please. Dr. Bader, due to the fact that uh, they drowned the, the real Patty Hayes, why is the family uh, defending this person that they have on trial? So do they, they don't know that this uh not their daughter? Yes, they do. And the other? Yes, ma'am, they do know this is not their daughter. Okay, your other question, ma'am? Uh, the other question is if... if uh, they are doing this with the Patty Hearst case. Did they bury the real Howard Hughes on yesterday? What was that? She wanted to know, did they bury the real Howard Hughes yesterday? Uh, no. Uh, this is a... No? I, I say I, I'm sorry. I don't know whether this is a real... Oh. Because uh, I have not gotten any hard information on this yet. I've stayed clear of Howard, uh, uh, Howard Hughes, uh, Howard Hughes, because of the fact that we've not been able to get any hard evidence and so I will have to beg off, Harry, until I do get... Uh, it's very strange indeed that uh, Bill Simon, our Secretary of Treasury, however, uh, had to get into the public act, and we are investigating why this was done. Uh, they're trying to uh, take uh, fingerprints of this alleged person down there. Of course, you've got to remember also in the SLA... Uh, which was a CIA outfit. They had funerals for people which did not actually, uh, where there were no people in certain coffins. And we've got to be very, very careful how they manipulate the news, you know. Well, you know, the FBI announced uh, yesterday, just a few minutes after the funeral, that uh, the fingerprint check verified that this was the real Howard well, Hughes. Again, you know, you're just taking the uh, words of the corrupt officials here in the government. Uh, uh, you must remember also they never did uh, reveal the fingerprints uh, of the uh, girl on trial at, uh, at the Patty Hearst trial in uh, in, uh, in, uh, Los An in San Francisco. Uh, they never did go into the background how she was raised. Uh, there were so many questions that was blocked from the jury on the Fifth Amendment. Same way here, I am not satisfied at the present time that I have such conclusive evidence as to even speak on the Hughes matter, except to say that there have been some strange things. There have been uh, funerals when they are not really funerals, our bodies not in caskets when they're supposed to be. And this is a result of, uh, of the CIA and the other intelligence communities in the United States uh, uh, torturing the truth. And someday, somehow, I hope that the truth will be made known to the American people. The American people go from crisis to crisis, and they're treated like children. I just hope that this will stop, Harry. You're on Ring Radio with Dr. Beter. Go ahead. Dr. Beter, uh, you know, all your all the things you've come out with just sound so fantastic that, you know, they, they almost sound like uh, fantasies. I mean, you know, if you have hard proof on this, why can't it be revealed? I, I couldn't hear you very well. He says a few, many of the things you reveal uh, sound like pure fantasy to him, and he wonders if... Uh, you have hard information on something. Uh, why couldn't you reveal it? I, I reveal everything that uh, uh, in the past two and a half, three years, I revealed everything except on the Patty Hearst deal simply because it involves quite a number of people. Uh, it involves uh, uh, a lot of people who were members of the SLA. Well, are, are you involved in some obligation of honor not to reveal more than you have until... Such something else happens? Yes. The only reason I'm doing it now, Harry, is to raise the question because when the book is published, if and when it is published, that the people won't be in a state of shock and say this is a, 
Uh, this book is far for anything. So I'm. Well, well, listen. How about taking about a, about a minute here and uh, and and tell me some of the things. I know you told us that, that Richard Nixon was going to resign, and you told us what day he was going to resign, and I believe he resigned on exactly the same day you said. What else have you revealed well in advance of it publicly and had come come to pass? Well, nine months in advance, I, I revealed that uh, Phil Agnew's picture would be on the front cover of uh, Time and Newsweek of August the 13th, and it was, and that a month later he would resign. I also revealed uh, that Nelson Rockefeller uh, at the time of his resignation uh, as governor of New York State on December 19, 1973, I revealed that he would be the vice president uh, by December the 20th, 1974. And I'm saying here today that uh, Vice President uh, Nelson Rockefeller's new schedule is to be the president of the United States come hell or high water uh, by September 1976. Uh, uh, Mr. Ford, having been enmeshed in a... Uh, gigantic uh, cover-up uh, scandal uh, involving his family and his finances, and that uh, he will pick uh, Ronald Reagan uh, as his vice president to complete the balanced picture, and that uh, Hubert Humphrey, as, as of the moment, will be the uh, presidential candidate on a Democratic ticket, and at the present time, uh, they are leaning towards uh, an unknown uh, for the vice president. He could well be okay, I, I've got to interrupt you now so we can pay the bills, even though we do it with Federal Reserve notes. You're on. Let's see. we got time for one more quick question. Which line is next, Mike? Uh, number three. Go ahead. You're on with Dr. B. Uh, good morning. I have heard uh, that uh, when we experienced all of those uh, UFOs, that many high-up officials in the government knew the truth about it, but that uh, they thought the American people wouldn't be able to stand the truth. And I would like to ask Dr. Beter, uh what does he think about the UFOs and if it has anything to do with his mysteriousness about Patty Hearst? Dr. Beter? That was the question. Okay, we're having a little trouble with the telephone, uh, given Dr. Beter an adequate uh, amount of volume. The question is, uh, does the UFO activity have anything to do with uh, the government officials keeping truth from us, and specifically, does it have any relationship whatsoever to the Patty Hearst case? Uh, uh, question number one, the F UFOs do exist. Uh, they're out in the western states. Uh, they are made of platinum. Uh, they are just as secret as the secret hideaways for the government officials around the country. Number two, they have nothing whatsoever to do with the Patty Hearst case. Excellent timing. We have five seconds till news at 9.30 on WRNG. Then we'll return. I'm Harry Davey. Peter Peter, your guest from Washington, and in order to uh, save wear and tear on the uh, ladies who work at the front desk, let me give you Dr. Peter Peter's address so that you can write him. I'll give it to you now, and I'll give it to you once more before we go off at 10, so keep your pencil ready. Uh, it's 1629 K Street Northwest, 1629 K Street Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20006. Washington, D.C., 20006, 1629 K Street, Northwest, and you spell Dr. Peter's last name, B-E-T-E-R. You're on Ring Radio with Dr. Peter Beter. Go ahead, please. Yes, uh, I'd like to know about the Hopper disappearance and also about this uh, program that Carter is running under the reorganization, if this is part of a communist control by the Rockefellers. If you please tell me, I'll hang up and listen. Got that? Uh, number one was what? Uh, no, say that. Was something about Hoffa? Yeah, uh, what information do you have about the Hoffa di disappearance? I have turned over the information that uh, I got from the intelligence sources about Hoffa's disappearance mm -hmm. months ago. And uh, part of the information included the fact that it was three persons who kidnapped uh, Jimmy Hoffa and took the body to Canada uh, on an island 
off of the east coast of Canada, uh, where they buried the body. I located the body of Jimmy Hoffa for the people, but for one reason or another, uh, I have not uh, followed up as to what uh, they did about it. Uh, number two, the Carter reorganization. I heard that, but I don't know what she's really referring to. Well, we, you've already addressed the basic question or your basic position with respect to Carter, which is that uh, Carter is essentially backed by the Rockefellers and that they're going to dump him when he's no longer useful to him, uh, probably before the election, right? Right, and if he knew that, I know for a fact that uh, uh, Mr. Carter would not uh, be going around the country as he's doing. Okay, you're on Ring Radio with Dr. Peter Beter. Go ahead, please. Hello, I'd like to ask Mr. Dr. Beter a question. All right. Um, I would just want to know, do you, do you believe in God? I, my whole faith is in God. Okay, thank you. Okay. WRNG, Ring Radio. Go ahead, please. Dr. Beter? Yes, ma'am. Uh, would you explain more about the ACT um, organization you have and explain more on the um, a way that you would go about filing your tax form or not filing it? Uh, ma'am, I don't know that... Uh the ACT, is, to my understanding, is an organization called Americans for Constitutional Taxation, and I don't believe Dr. Beter has any connection with that, nor am I aware that he's dealt with the area of uh, Fifth Amendment tax returns. Have you? No, uh, I don't. Okay. So that question would need to be addressed to someone who's involved in the tax rebellion rather than uh, to Dr. Beter. You're on Ring Radio. Go ahead, please. Yes, Dr. Peters. How did you go about uh, organizing such connections to receive your information? Uh, when I uh, started practicing law in uh, Washington, D.C. in 1951, I represented also in a private capacity uh, agents in the FBI and CIA, and I took care of their personal matters, whether it be uh, uh, states or whether it be uh, divorces or what have you. And then uh, in 1961, uh, when President Kennedy appointed me as counsel to the Export-Import Bank, where I served for six years, I had a high clearance rating and I went on secret missions uh, for the government abroad, and I got in touch with people abroad, at MI6, and so forth, in England. And then from 1968 to 1973, uh, early 73, in my business in the largest black nation in Africa, in the Congo, in Kinshasa, my trips uh, on behalf of the company, a development company, uh, to help uh, uh, the Congo, which is now known as Zaire, to develop the country, I came in contact with the intelligence agencies uh, in Britain, uh, French, uh, France, Germany, and Japan. And as a result, my contacts still continue with those, including those people here uh, in Washington. They've been very, very good to me, and uh, I help them in. Their, I still help them in certain uh, respects. You're on Ring Radio with Dr. Peter Peter. Go ahead, Mr. Peter Peter. Speaking. Uh, are you uh, up to date on this capital punishment thing? Are you think we can go and get it passed? Uh, capital punishment where? Like that uh, Sharon Tate incident out in California. Yes. You think it'll be passed? I really don't know. I haven't uh, researched that, uh, so I can't honestly give you an answer. Well, I know they've been talking about it, but I didn't hear much about it lately. Yes, I haven't uh, researched it, so therefore I honestly can't give you an answer to that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. 9.42 the time, and you're on Ring Radio with Dr. Peter Beter. Go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, Dr. Beter? Yes, sir. I am uh, yes, curious sir. to know if you have any publications. This is the first time I've uh, been able to hear you. I don't know how many times you've been on uh, Harry's program. Oh, he's been on... Seven or eight times, I guess. Well, Harry, I'm a new uh, listener to you in the okay. last uh, few months. Yes, but, I, have, uh, I have what is called the audio, a monthly audio letter, which is my newsletter. It's done on a tape cassette, uh -huh. and it comes out every month. If you will write to me, uh, 1629 uh, K Street in Washington, D.C., I will send you the information on it. Okay, Harry, I'm, I could not hear him. Okay, the address is 1629 K Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C. He pro publishes an, an audio cassette uh, letter, is what it's, what it's called. Tape. Talking tapes uh, on various subjects every month and uh, back issues. And a list of those back issues, I guess, could be gotten by simply dropping him a note at 1629 K Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 2006. 
And the spelling of the last name is B-E-T-E-R. You're on Ring Radio with Dr. Peter. Peter, go ahead, please. Dr. Peter, I find it strange, but not unusual for the government to go on and on about this possible swine flu that's supposed to become an epidemic this fall while they cover up the Fort Knox plutonium poison. Do you have anything on the mass, <clears throat> mass inoculation of all Americans? Uh, that's going into my uh, audio, monthly audio letter number 11 very shortly. That's a very, very good question. Uh, you've hit it right on the bull's head. Uh, the entire southeast portion of the United States is now contaminated by leaking plutonium coming out of the United States Bullion Depository at Fort Knox. And uh, number two... Uh, I'm well, how, how does it get out of there and contaminate the whole southeast? Uh, it's been in there since the 60s, uh, Harry. Uh, this is the same casks of plutonium that is now on the fourth floor of the United States Embassy in Moscow, which is giving the people there leukemia and lung cancer, and our State Department will not come clean. That, those uh, uh, plutonium casks were put in the United States Moscow uh, uh, Embassy, uh, three casks are there on the fourth floor of the main building, the nine-story building. The same casks that are now in the uh, central core vault, which have been leaking uh, since the late 60s. It's been in the water now, down beneath Fort Knox, which are now caverns, which are being used by the Louisville Gas and Electric Company as storage facilities. Also, this uh, plutonium particles are all going into the air through the ventilation system and is now seeping into the ground. This is one of the horrendous situations brought about by the negligence of the intelligence community, and they are covering up and saying that now we're going to have flu this coming year. Got to stop right now, Dr. Beter. It's 9.45 on WRNG. We'll return with Peter Beter in a moment. You're on Ring Radio with Dr. Peter. Peter, go ahead, please. Good morning, Harry. How are you doing? Great. Go ahead. Ask Dr. Peter your question. Okay. I have two direct uh, questions. I'll be brief as possible. One, I want to find out what was your opinion of our Secretary, uh, uh, Dr. Kissinger, on the statement that he felt that uh, uh, Richard Nixon was our better, turned out to be one of our better presidents. I want you to make that opinion by putting politics aside. And the, and the press view of the former president aside. Secondly, I want to know, do you feel that uh, a mystery will grow around Richard Nixon as it has in the past with Howard Hughes? You know, the less we've heard of Howard Hughes, the more mysterious he became. I'll hang up and, uh, and listen to your viewpoint on that. And thanks a lot again, Harry. You got all that, Dr. Uh, he wanted to know what the... Kissinger's viewpoint was on Nixon. What do you think about Kissinger's uh, statement that Richard Nixon was one of our better presidents? Well, uh, let me say this. Uh, from my own information, and I can only speak uh, from the information I received, Right. on the last night that uh, Kissinger was with Nixon, he uh, blackmailed President Nixon by saying that if he did not resign, he would play a certain tape uh, dated uh, April 1974 at a press conference. Can you tell us what was on that tape? Uh, this was the missing tape uh, which would have implicated uh, President Nixon and a, and a uh, type of action uh, which would be uh, detrimental to his reputation. Well, if Henry Kissinger was the one who said, you resign or I'll play the, or I'll play the tape, as you are alleging here, if... if public for the first time. All right, if, if Henry Kissinger did that, was he acting for Henry Kissinger? No, he was acting for Nelson Rockefeller. For Nelson Rockefeller. Because every bit of information that Kissinger got, duplicates of his press releases, duplicates of his telephone conversations were sent to Pocantico Hills. All right. What all is in this Rockefeller safe at Pocantico Hills where they, even the secular press has told us recently that uh, you know, Kissinger has a whole lot of his papers there. What all is in that safe? Any idea? Not a safe. Uh, underneath Pocantico Hills, I've been there, is a tremendous vault where big trucks can go in. Uh, these are just uh, one of a series of caves that he has in New York State. Uh, in the Pocantico Hills, it is uh, uh, this big uh, vault which can uh, let a uh, big truck come in, uh, contains the secret documents of all of our government uh, 
under the uh, uh, Kissinger Rockefeller uh, program. And uh, Kissinger had all the tapes. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Nixon really didn't have to have these tapes because the CIA, which is nothing but a uh, private detective agency for the Rockefellers, had all the tapes up there. Uh, someday, God willing, that all of this will come out and uh, indict the real uh, perpetrators who have double-crossed this country and placed it in the hands of the Soviets, that is, the Rockefellers and their lackeys, including uh, Henry Kissinger. So my idea is, sure, Nixon made some mistakes, uh, and he did double-cross the Rockefellers by not appointing Nelson, and he appointed uh, uh, Ford. Sure, uh, he did try to help uh, the American people in many ways, uh, which did make the uh, Rockefellers uh, mad at him. We'll return with Dr. Peter Beter and more conversation in just a moment. Dr. Peter Beter, your guest by long distance. Dr. Beter, you were in the middle of answering a man's question relative to uh, Richard Nixon and uh, Henry Kissinger. Is there anything on any of your audio tapes about that? Uh, yes, in my recent one, audit, monthly audio letter number 10, I go into more detail and reveal uh, uh, how they're still after uh, President Nixon. And I have to give the devil his credit. Uh, I, I, as a lawyer, I give uh, credit where credit is due. And uh, I don't take sides. I just let the chips fall where they may. So in the monthly audio letter number 10, uh, if he can write to me, I will give him more information on it. All right, let me give the address for the last time before we go to the news at 10 o'clock. That's Dr. Peter Beter, B-E-T-E-R, 1629-1629-K, the letter K Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C., Two zero 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 six. And if they write to me, Harry, I will also, if they will ask uh, for the uh, Rockefeller secret constitution, new constitution for America, uh, which abolishes the present Congress as we know it, and makes President uh, Rockefeller a dictator for, uh, for a period of nine years, if they will send me two dollars to cover expenses, I will send them a uh, a copy of uh, Rockefeller's secret new constitution and how it's going to be implemented. Let me ask you a question relative to the Watergate. This new movie that's come out about uh, Woodstein, Woods, <laughs> Bernstein and Woodward. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, is this movie uh, in any way accurate in terms of its portrayal of what's, uh, what took place at the Watergate? Uh, what is accurate is not said. Uh, how do you mean? What is not in the movie is the truth. Uh, if you take uh, their uh, movie, which is based on their book, uh, you will not see in the index the real characters who brought about Watergate. So it is, as far as I'm concerned, a fictional piece of work. All right, but uh, uh, were, in your opinion now, were uh, Woodward and Bernstein, uh, did they know they were being used by uh, Rockefeller to get rid of Nixon, or were, were they uh, legitimately uh, seeking a story as good reporters should? Uh, I can't answer that. Okay. And we've got time uh, for one, maybe two last uh, questions here before we have to leave you, Dr. Beter. Go ahead. Uh, Dr. Beter, do you believe that the uh, Rockefellers had anything to do with the, the assassination of President Kennedy? All I can say about that is that President Kennedy uh, was uh, going to uh, close the Vietnamese War. And number two, it still rings in my mind when he said that Castro uh, was a tool of international communist conspiracy. And because of that, contrary to what you read in the newspaper, he was killed because he came upon the greatest thing that has made us a tool of the Soviet Union, and that is the Rockefeller plan to merge our life with that of the Soviet Union, and this has been the policy in the White House since 1954. He sold the life in the United States so that it can be merged with that in the Soviet Union. This has been the policy in the executive department of our government. Since 1954, he found out about it, he was going to put a stop to it, and he was killed. Okay, Dr. Beter, I sure appreciate you being with us today. We are about out of time, and uh, we'll look forward to talking with you again. If you get anything red hot, give me a call. 
Okay, Harry, and I want to say to everybody, God bless each and every one of you, because he is watching over you. Thank you. Dr. Peter Beter from Washington, D.C., has been our guest during this uh, hour and a half since we started talking with him at 8.30. Dr. Peter Beter is a fascinating man, and let me state that uh, for the record, you should realize this. We tell it to you 10 or 15 or 20 times a day. Dr. Beter's opinions are his opinions. They're not necessarily my opinions. He may be absolutely right, he may be absolutely wrong, or he may be right on some things, and he may be wrong on other things. I don't have the vaguest idea, and I don't uh, vouch for his opinions. I can tell you this, though, on many things... Dr. Peter Beter has been absolutely correct. Certainly he told us what was going to happen with Agnew, when he'd be on the cover of the magazine, when Agnew was going to resign. He told us when Richard Nixon was going to resign. He said the gold was missing at Fort Knox. And the government uh, finally reacted by taking a group of people in there and showing them, hey, see that stack through the window darkly? It's gold, they said. But experts who were there said the color was wrong. <laughs> so who knows? Dr. Peter Beter may be absolutely correct. He may be absolutely wrong. But like with everything, find out for yourself. Do your own checking. Uh, certainly, all that we have been told in the papers and at the 6 o'clock news from uh, uh, Cronkite and Brinkley and Huntley and all the rest of them has not panned out to be accurate in many instances. Have a good day. I'll be with you tomorrow at 7.06. WRNG North Atlanta. 